Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 2 player tutorial series. So, now we've got our game kind of set up, all the basic elements are working within the world. We've got the ability for our players to, two players to run around, they can throw snowballs at each other, and each snowball takes the damage, or sorry, each player takes damage from the snowballs, and it's shown on the screen. So perfect, those are the kind of basic elements of our game, but now let's start enhancing um, how the game feels, and add some sound into the mix. So, first thing we're going to do is um, bring our sound files into the game. So we're going to go into our assets folder, we're going to create a new folder that we'll call, we'll just call it sounds, we could call it audio either, but we'll stick with sounds for now. And in the, the, the resources that are linked below the video, which were included straight away, which is where we got all our sprites and stuff, there's a folder of audio in there, so I'm going to drag these three audio files into our sounds folder and into our game and it'll take a second to kind of compile them into the game I'm actually going to turn down the audio on my computer here as it'll be overwhelming the microphone uh, but once this audio is brought into unity then we can use this uh, in the game itself so this can take sometimes it can take a while and because I'm recording it makes it take a little bit longer as well but there we go now we've got our sound in the game so uh, First thing we do, we'll very simply, we'll add our music into the background of the game. So I'm going to drag this into our hierarchy here. It creates a copy. Uh, I'm going to drag it so it's kind of out of the way, but it won't it won't make any difference to the sound itself. But we're just kind of dragging it out of the uh, view of our scene here. Um, not that that would be visible in the game itself, but it's just handy kind of to have it out of the way. So we want to make sure that this is playing when our game starts. So that's we have play on awake ticked by default we want to have loop set as well because if our players are playing for a while and they go back uh, we don't want the music to just kind of run out that wouldn't be good for anybody and then what I'm going to do is get the volume here and I'm going to turn it down quite a bit just because of the way these files are I've messed around just with the values of these myself and I've just found that around around 15 say is just fine for uh, a couple of these files so we if we hit play now we should be able to hear a bit of music playing nice bit of music in the background just kind of a fun little thing kind of suits with the bobby nature of our players as well so now we have that little thing going that's absolutely fine but what we also want of course is to have some actual sound effects in our game because when we throw snowballs at the moment it just kind of they explode but there's no kind of real uh, interesting going on and there's nothing to tell when our players get damaged the only way we can tell our player is damaged is by the candy cane kind of going down but what really helps a game feel better is adding some sound into the mix so we're going to add these two simple effects one is a heart sound effect and one is the sound of our snowballs being thrown so we're going to grab both of these guys as well i'm going to drag these off to the right here Again, it doesn't make any difference to the sound, how the sound sounds to you, but it's just a way of clearing up our scene as we go here. And our heart sound effect, I also want to turn this one down nice and low. So we're going to set that to be 0.15 as well because it's quite loud. And our troll sound effect is actually, it's a very quiet sound file, so we're going to leave that at kind of full volume. So now we need to decide how do we actually make these sound files play. Well, to make them play, of course, we're going to need to have them be referenced in our scripts so let's just have a think about when both of these sound files are being used within our game so our heart sound effect will only be used when our players take damage and the only time our players take damage is by using the game manager script so whenever our players are our, our p1 heart function or our p2 heart function are called then we know at that point we hey we should play the set heart sound effect here so similarly with our throw sound effect we know that that's happening every time our player throws a snowball and that function is being called by our player controller script so we know that hey this throw sound effect should be associated with the player controller script and our heart sound effect should be associated with the game manager so let's do that with both of those scripts now. So, well, we'll do one at a time, but we'll do the game manager first. So we're going to add a public audio source that we'll call, uh, we'll just call it the heart sound. 
And basically what we want to happen is whenever the player gets hurt, we'll play this sound. So we can go down here to hurt P1 and hurt P2. And just after we do the loop through the array of candy canes, we'll do a heart, oh, we, too many H's there, heart sound dot play. Put their little brackets and our semicolon. So that'll play the heart sound effect when player one gets hit. And equally we want to do it for player two as well. So we'll add heart sound dot play. Like that. So we're going to save this and test this out in the game. So before we start the game playing though, there's one thing we want to do which for our background music, um, just wait for that to compile and catch up with us. So our background music, we knew that we wanted that to loop and that we also wanted it to play as soon as the game started. But our heart sound effect and our throw sound effect, we don't want either of them, we don't, we don't want them to loop, but we also don't want them to play as soon as the game starts. And so you just get some weird sounds when the game starts up and that's obviously not what we want so we'll turn off play on awake on both of them and then we'll go to our canvas where we have our game manager script attached and now we'll drag our heart sound effect into there like that and now if we hit play here what we should get we get a little thump like that when our player gets hit and the same happens for player two perfect just the way we want we'll do so we know that that's working fine so the next thing we'll do is set up with the throw on the uh, player controller so that'll be almost the exact same thing we we'll go into our player controller we need to add a reference to the throw sound obviously so we'll say public audio source uh, that we'll call throw sound and then down here when we're doing our throw ball action just after our trigger, we can add throw sound dot play. And this is just one way of doing it. If you have, for example, if you have the sound effect directly attached to the player, what you could do is actually in the animator, set it so that it turn it activates the object in the animator and then deactivates it uh, once it's finished. Um, but we're happy to just do this nice and simply, con from the script like this is a just a simple and straightforward way to do it. Okay, so we've got our troll sound effects set up there. We can now go back into the game. Uh, oh, we got a bit of an error here. Why do we do... Oh, we didn't put our semicolon in. Of course, one of the most um, common uh, and simple mistakes that everyone makes when they're coding the game is forgetting to add a semicolon at the end of the line. Uh, and it's not always as obvious to catch as that. So that's why you don't want to write uh, like three pages of code in one go because then you'll come back to uh, because you'll come back into the game and there'll be an error and you'll be like, where is this error? It could be anywhere in this list of things. But uh, anyway, we're digressing there. Uh, so we'll go to our both of our players here. We're going to highlight both of them and we'll scroll down into the player controller script. And here we have our troll sound slot, which is obviously empty and we're going to drag our throw sound effect in there and now when we play the game uh, I'm going to just jump out of the way here first so we're not just hitting the player and you hear that sound but there's a very quiet little throwing the snowball effect I and mean, you don't want it to be too loud because you don't want a loud beep or something every time you're throwing the ball that's not that would just get very distracting uh, if I just actually turn off the music here for a second And here we get we can hear the snowball being troll, but then you can also when it impacts you can hear the distinction between the two different sounds and that's majorly important that like there's two very obvious different sounds for when you're throwing the ball but there you go that's how we add a nice little bit of sound into the game and make it kind of feel it makes everything feel more solid and real just add that tiny tiny we've added two sounds and a bit of background music but somehow that completely changes how the game feels. But there you go, that's some simple sound effects. And now that we have those set up, we need to do things like adding a menu into the game and making it so that our players can restart the level after the game is won. Because at the moment, the player one wins the game and hey, that's it, you have to close out of the whole program, which is obviously not what you want. So in the next episode, we're gonna take a look at adding those little finishing touches to the game. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all very soon.